Okay, so I made a little mistake and I started working on the file testing for the for this video uh, before saving it. So I basically just rebuilt this stuff. It's all pretty much the same. We've got glass and dirt and the values should all look as they as they did. There's one important change that I need to make though. I'm using my my dark red here. I'm using this dark red anchor as the primary uh, mask for the layer right here. And I actually want to disconnect this layer from the mask. And I just want to have kind of a base fill for this. So here's my dark red copy. Whatever, we'll just kind of drop it down. And I'll just say like light base. And I'm going to turn all of this stuff off. We don't actually want this layer to do anything other than contribute our mask. So I'm going to add the anchor point up here and I've got light base mask and then I'm just going to roll up to that fill that's plugged into our our main folder here. We're going to get rid of this and we're just going to add light base mask. So now I can use the dark red mask without worrying about messing with the the main mask for this layer here. The first thing that I need to do to begin propagating this feature to these other slots is I'm going to, I've got a, a, an anchor in, light, uh, in a dark red mask. And what that means is I can actually use my mask that is plugged into this layer, this guy, anywhere else I want, so long as I can plug it into a fill. So I'm going to add a fill directly to the top of this dark red mask anchor here. And into it, I will plug dark red mask. So I'm going to hop over to the 3D, 2D view so that we can see what's going on here. Oops, kind of giving it away. Forgotten how to use Substance Painter. So I'm going to deselect that for a second and we will just zoom over. So again, these little areas here, these are the features that we want to put our little, our little uh, lights into. And you can see if I activate the mask here, even though I've got a nice pretty slot right in here and the UVs it's got this kind of warble in it and that's just a result of some distortion in the UVs which isn't a big deal but it will cause problems as we begin to propagate this out to the other ones because the distortion in all these other ones is a little bit different but I will show you a solution for that uh, fairly shortly here so I've got my fill I'm going to activate the mask so we can see what's going on with the fill selected I'm just going to scoot it over here. So what we can see is it's no longer there. Well, that's not really going to do us much good. We need something there as well. We just need to set our blending mode to add. And there we can see we've got our original one is now back. We can't see it because our master layer has this area being black. So whenever we want to pipe in a new mask, we just need to add a fill and then, whoops, I didn't need to add light base, I meant dark red. And then once again, we just set this to add and figure out why dark red mask. Right, so we're gonna basically need to go in and add all of the fills that we want on this layer and then add a new mask, a new, a new anchor, and then plug that in up top. So we'll basically be inheriting all of the stuff that is in this mask to plug it in. So I'm just gonna get rid of this for now and this will be very full of things shortly. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one fill base and we can expand that out just a little bit. So I have three of these on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and in my dark red, I've got the first one. Here's the second one, right? And then we'll go ahead and make a new fill. Plug in dark red mask, set it to linear dodge, and move it down. Might be a little bit tricky to see exactly how these things are landing in their little nooks and crevices, but we're actually not going to worry about that uh, right away. I kind of just want to show you what this process looks like, set it to a linear dodge, and then we will address the uh, issue with our distortion in the UVs before we do the rest of these. 
So we've got four. Let's add another fill. Go ahead and plug in our dark red mask. Set this to linear dodge. Zoom out a little bit. Grab the fill, scoot it over to there approximately. And we'll add one more fill. Dark red mask, set it to linear dodge and move it over here. So again, we cannot see them because they're not being plugged into the emissive. But if I add another anchor point to the top of the stack, I'm going to need to rename it. We'll just call it like group mask. So I'm going to add a fill up here and I'm going to name it dark red. And into our anchor points, we just go and grab dark red group. Now we are no longer blocking it. Everything is plugged in and we can see we have, they are not really placed in, in, a, in intelligent ways. I just kind of eyeballed it, right? No big deal. I mostly just wanted to show you what this concept looks like. And we need to kind of identify this problem here so that we can go and fix it. So I don't know exactly where this is. I'm going to go ahead and just make a new fill layer. And I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to add a paint. And into that paint, I'm just going to paint over here. Okay. So this right here, go ahead and we can delete that layer. This UV section is speaking to this. So we can figure out which one of these things that is working with, and then we can just kind of move it. And what you can see in the UVs is even though it is a beautiful little slot on this side with nice straight edges over here, it is all crazy. And that is going to break our beautiful idea here of just adding fills, moving them around and saving ourselves the hassle of modifying this. Now the beauty of this system is if for some reason, let's say art direction comes back and says, there's too many lights in here. All we've got to do is we just modify our yellow paint layer and they will all update because it's going to be the same mask being piped into everything. So we need to do a little bit of setup on the front side and then we get a lot of control over ease of iteration downstream because again what we're doing is we're basically just duplicating our our one mask and plugging it into various places so uh, we're about eight minutes in I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video now because the next section is going to be a little bit of a tweak to the UVs in Maya that should not be too terribly difficult it is worth noting that this is the one that we want to keep. So that's the one, the UVs that we're going to use going forward. Uh, so that's going to be a super cool video. Stick around.